All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeff Cooper, Health Commissioner at Public Health Dayton, Montgomery County. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we have s several speakers with us. We're pleased that they're here again. Uh, Commissioner Judy Dodge from Montgomery County, Mayor Nan Whaley from the City of Dayton, and new to the forum today, Michael Vanderberg, Executive Director of St. Vincent de Paul, and then Sarah Hackenbrack again, President and CEO of the Greater Dayton Area Hospital Association. So boy, you can see this coming. Uh, globally, we're close to 585,000 cases now within 176 countries, claiming almost 27,000 lives. Every time you go to one of those national sites, you step away for a half hour, you go back and the numbers are higher. Our country now has the most cases globally of any country, and that's a very disturbing trend that we've all been witnessing. We're close, we're a little over 97,000 total cases throughout the United States now with over 1,300 deaths. And it's been a predictable progression that we've all been witnessing for the past month. Ohio, 20,149 total tests have been conducted for Ohioans. And we stand now at 1,137 confirmed cases. And that age range is less than one year of old to 96 years of age. Unfortunately, 19 individuals in Ohio have died as a result of infection with COVID-19 disease. 276 individuals have been hospitalized and 186 uh, individuals of that 1,137 are healthcare workers. It's vitally important that we keep healthcare workers healthy to where we can be prepared for the upcoming surge in cases that we will see in our state and in our community. For Montgomery County, we now stand at 22 confirmed cases. We were at 16 yesterday. So those numbers are gonna start increasing significantly. 12 of those individuals are female, 10 are males. Three of those individuals are hospitalized. <clears throat> so when you look at all of the epidemic curves, the national curve, the curve for the state of Ohio and Montgomery County's curve, they're all still trending upward. So clearly we are nowhere close to peaking in this country, this state, or in our community. Yes. Without question, our social distancing efforts have been helpful. They're helping to flatten the curve, to push it out a longer duration, and they're helping to buy us time. However, we heard on the governor's news conference today, the Ohio Department of Health Director Amy Acton indicated that current modeling from the Cleveland Clinic has identified a very disturbing piece of information. We should expect a significant increase in cases within the next two weeks. We will have a projected peak now sometime in mid-May, so it's pushed out a little farther. And perhaps most disturbing, we have been informed that we currently, if, that, if those projections end up being the case, we will need three times the current capacity for hospital beds and ventilators. And so this is a very serious issue. Um, this is something that is, that is unprecedented in, in, in our lifetimes, and we have to be prepared. So currently our hospital systems are developing their plans for surge, and they will be submitting those to the governor. And we were informed today that the Ohio National Guard will be helping to oversee and facilitate all of that surge capacity readiness and planning. We also learned today that the revised modeling estimates indicate that perhaps up to a maximum of 10,000 new cases per day will be occurring in Ohio as we move towards that peak. That is an incredible number of cases throughout this state. So it's vitally important that we continue to adhere to our social distancing me methods. So please stay at home. Without question, please stay at home unless it is absolutely necessary for you to leave. And we all understand the circumstances in the order under which we can leave our homes. But speaking of home, you know, some of us are not that fortunate. And some people don't have a place to call home. Um, 
and some through, no mis some through misfortune and no fault of their own end up homeless. And so I personally believe that helping those less fortun fortunate is a duty incumbent on all of us because we should be linked together by a, an unbreakable chain of caring for others, especially those most vulnerable. And one of our speakers today, Michael Vanderberg, is going to be sharing his plans for helping those less fortunate. So thank you for being here today. Um, it's truly a champion for those who are less fortunate and, and those that don't have what oftentimes the rest of us have. So with that, I'd like to welcome our first speaker, Commissioner Judy Dodge. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, the Montgomery County Commissioners, Debbie Lieberman, Carolyn Rice, and I recently activated our Regional Emergency Management Agency to respond to the threat posed by the, cor the uh, virus that we've had here in our region. The Emergency Management Agency is currently helping collect and distribute cr critical supplies such as personal protective equipment or PPE to frontline workers. This includes managing the resources provided by the Strategic National Stockpile, which arrived on Monday, and we're expecting another delivery here in the next day or two. To see what is needed and how to make donations, please go to our website, mcohio.org, and click on COVID-19 resources at the top of the page. We also know this crisis is having a huge, huge impact on our workers and our national economy. We encourage anyone who has lost work due to the virus to apply using your phone, smartphone, or computer to unemployment.ohio.gov. That's unemployment.ohio.gov, no spaces in between. Our workforce development team is still working with companies who are hiring. So interested applicants should call 937-225-JOBS or 937-225-5627 to connect with a recruiter. And employers who are hiring should also call that number so you can let us know who you might need and we'll be helping you to fill those positions. Now regarding SNAP, and Medicaid renewals. If you were supposed to renew your benefits in April or May, your benefits will automatically, automatically be extended for six months. Now more information is available on our website, mcohio.org. Now for those who are new to SNAP and TANF applications, please call the call center and that's open Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock in the morning until noon. And again, you can call that number, 937-225-4148. Again, there's more information on our website, mcohio.org. Finally, if you're interested in volunteering to help the community during this difficult time, we have received many, many phone calls from people that are saying, what can I do to help? So please, we've, we're starting a website, and um, if you want to volunteer or you're an essential nonprofit agency, just click on mcohio.org and follow the information, and you can sign up to be a volunteer or if you need help. So anyway, we've got a lot of information there, and I think 99% of it is on mcohio.org. And again, on behalf of my fellow commissioners, Debbie Lieberman, Carolyn Rice, our county administrator, Michael Colbert, please, all of you, stay safe, and please adhere to washing your hands, stay six feet apart, do not go to work if you're sick. Thank you. Good, evening, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley. Uh, have some uh, updates today from questions you had yesterday and uh, some efforts moving forward. So first, uh, as you probably saw, the, the um, stimulus package was passed, by co was passed by Congress by unanimous consent today. So I know that we'll have lots of questions in the coming days about what does this mean for each person. We'll work to get that information in the coming days to everyone. 
Uh, so please just hang tight this weekend as everybody tries to figure all of that out, and we'll work to get that to you as soon as possible. I spoke to the Lieutenant Governor this afternoon, particularly around unemployment. I know the site is very slow, to, particularly today is very slow. Uh, please be patient, don't overclick, take your time, and keep in mind that we, they have extended the seven day rule. Normally you have to apply for unemployment in seven days. You can wait longer now um, and take your time through it. So you know, just be, please be patient. If you think about how many people now are unemployment, the most ever in the history of unemployment, uh, these, these uh, websites weren't set to handle that kind of, kind of effort. So please just uh, be patient and maybe consider uh, going on on a, on a time that you don't think a lot of people will be on and appreciate everybody's pa patience. Uh, also this afternoon, I just want to give some perspective as Commissioner Cooper talks about how fast this is going to come at us as we see 22 um, uh, confirmed cases in Montgomery County and we know there's many more because we know a lot of people have not been tested uh, just because we do not have the test. And I was on the phone with over 200 mayors this afternoon and uh, the mayor of New York City made this point. On March 1st, which was just about nine days before our first press conference, I think when we started coming together here every day, uh, New York City had their first case. Today, they have 25,573 cases and 366 people have died. So that is how fast this will come to our community. That is why we are begging and pleading with you to stay home, even if you are well, to please stay home, to wash your hands regularly. Uh, you see us touching this podium. I can guarantee you every single one of us will go to the bathroom and wash our hands or use hand sanitizer after this because we want to make sure that people remain safe. And even if you feel well, you still have a role and responsibility to help our community, to help our healthcare workers who are in desperate need of PPE, who we know just like in Cleveland, one in four healthcare workers are the people that are sick with this virus. So you have to do your part. And we're asking everyone to do their part by staying home this weekend and only going out for truly essential items. Uh, we had a question yesterday uh, about the pharmacy, about, was you, right? About the licenses with the pharmacy. Uh, I got a call back that the pharmacy, th so the question was, just to repeat the question from yesterday, is what do you do when the pharmacy asks for your ID and your ID is expired and you can't go and get a new ID because of BMV? And we've, we've said, you know, you won't be pulled over for your tags being expired and you won't be pulled over for your expired license. There's no trouble there. Uh, so the pharmacy board is looking into this specifically. Uh, it is not a state law to have an ID to get your pharmaceuticals. It may be a company policy, and we know that many companies put this policy in place, particularly with the opioid epidemic, so we understand that. I do think that the companies would probably be likely to understand if you have an expired license because of the BMV, but if people have specific questions that more, if you wanna talk to me afterwards about the specific place, we can definitely work on that, or they can just Facebook or, uh, get to me and we'll see what we can find out specifically because the pharmacy board did want more specific information about that. So as we engage in this weekend, <coughs> I just want to make the friendly reminder of uh, asking and um, really ordering from the governor's order uh, to not congregate this weekend. Uh, we will have folks watching parks. We encourage people to get out in the parks and walk and walk the 400 miles of trail and bicycle. I know it's gonna be a little stormy tomorrow morning, so not probably a lot of people out, but get that exercise. But please keep your distance, and uh, this is not an opportunity to get together. I know that's painful to hear, especially for those of us, we in Dayton, we like to get together with people, we have lots of friends, but please do uh, these healthcare workers a solid and stay apart and make sure that we keep our physical distance. It is, it's, I mean, I cannot tell you how important this is in the next two weeks. Uh, so we're asking you all to do that. Uh, again, you can reach public health at 225-6217 for any sort of questions about the order. Uh, and then also you can reach any of us as you all have done pretty regularly. Thanks for what you're doing for Dayton. I'd like to introduce Michael Vanderberg, Executive Director, St. Vincent de Paul. Thanks, Jeff. Nan, I'm going to do my best not to touch the podium. It's really hard. It's uh, good afternoon, everybody. 
Um, I'm here uh, to talk about the most uh, vulnerable among us, and that would be the, the homeless in the Dayton community, and particularly those that are in the care of the St. Vincent de Paul Society in our two emergency shelters. We um, currently have about 400 men, women, and children in shelter every night. And uh, yesterday we launched what we call Operation Stop COVID to take about 20% or roughly 82 folks now, I believe we have, um, out of our shelters and get them into satellite shelters. So this is a way to um, uh, take the, f the folks who are um, uh, in the highest risk categories, they have chronic health conditions, young children, um, infants, um, that you know we were concerned about spreading the virus and and also uh, again those that uh, that just have constitutions that are that are particularly problematic if they should get sick so um, we've committed to stick to this satellite policy we have area hotels that have cooperated with us uh, red roof inns has been fantastic to work with and uh, we're, we're really excited about that but it also creates some more uh, logistical troubles for us there's great expense to it um, luckily, we've had, um, so far, uh, the community support that we need to make everything work uh, to get that going. So um, we're, we're happy that we have that in place, and we are committed to keeping it in place for as long as is necessary to get us through uh, the, the infection peak that we know is coming. Um, now, I'd like to s speak for a moment about how the, all of the tragedies that we've experienced over the last year since the Memorial Day tornadoes have brought the, the government and uh, nonprofit and faith-based partnerships together in a way that is just amazing. And we, we have these relationships that we built over the last year that allow us to respond in a very robust way and to deploy resources right away. We have tremendous cooperation among the city and county and, and uh, faith-based organizations and other nonprofit organizations and the support of people at home who are financially supporting us, who have been volunteering for us in different capacities, who have um, now stepped up and with skilled volunteering in a, in a very particular way, um, that's, that's just been tremendous for us to respond. And so um, we are, again, we're committed to uh, keep the most vulnerable as safe as we can, but in our shelters, we just don't have the ideal conditions to have everyone be six feet apart like they should be. So. Um, with that, uh, that's my summary. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And next we have Sarah Hackenbrack from the Greater Dayton Area Hospital Association. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. And as we learned today, Ohio is facing some unique challenges that we have been planning and preparing for as a community over the last several weeks. Our hospital community in particular has taken these challenges very seriously and we've been working across silos, across organizations, and across the region to make sure that the plans that we build are going to address the needs and the concerns and the capacity that we're going to need here in the Dayton region. And so I want to emphasize the internal work that our hospitals are taking to address and prepare for the inpatient care that is going to be required to address the coronavirus. Our hospitals are actively converting facilities, converting space within those facilities to ensure that we can care for people who need inpatient care, including intensive care units. And then we are building the external partner relationships with our long-term acute care facilities, long-term care and skilled nursing facilities, as well as specialty care hospitals and rehab hospitals to make sure that as we need additional inpatient care space in our short-term acute care hospitals, as we need additional in, in intensive care space, we can move patients to other areas in the community so that we can address the most acute critical care needs right in our hospital emergency departments, our inpatient facilities, and those intensive care spaces that we've built. And we continue to see and learn more from the governor's office and the Ohio Department of Health are very grateful for their leadership in providing additional information. And we continue to look at additional models that we can bring into the region and into the community to help give us an even more robust picture of exactly what we think is going to happen here in the Dayton region. And as we continue to build those plans and models, we are acutely aware 
of the needs for our healthcare workers and those individuals on the front lines who are going to be absolutely critical in taking care of the individuals in our community. We are eagerly awaiting, as Commissioner Dodge mentioned, the resupply of materials from the strategic national stockpile, but we also know that those resources and supplies are going to be shared throughout the region and they need to meet the needs of the entire country. And so we are actively working as a hospital community and as a healthcare community to determine what other options might exist for us to bring in additional supplies or to build regional conservation efforts among our healthcare facilities and communities to make sure that we can protect and safeguard those healthcare workers who are gonna be so critical for us in the coming days and weeks ahead. Thank you.